I think it's pretty safe to say that the 2JZ is one of the most legendary and best known engines ever, especially when it comes to JDM engines. In the past, we've compared the 2JZ to other engines such as the RB26, the B58, and the Barra. Today we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to compare the 2JZ GE to the 2JZ GTE. First of all, welcome to the new studio guys. I moved to a new location with a dedicated office so I can try and bring more content to you guys. Before we get too deep into the differences between these two engines, I think we should briefly cover the basics of the 2JZ as a whole. The 2JZ, as you probably know, is the second engine in the Toyota JZ engine family. It was developed during a time when Toyota basically over-engineered absolutely everything. It's a 3 liter inline 6 engine with a bore of 86 millimeters and a stroke of 86 millimeters, making it a square engine. It features a cast iron block, very strong internals, and some of them use Toyota's VVTi system. The 2JZ was produced from 1991 to 2007, and when Toyota was still producing it, you could find it in a bunch of different applications. These applications range from the Supra, GS300, IS300, SC300, Chaser, Crown, and more. The 2JZ GTE specifically was only found in the Supra or the Aristo. Starting with the absolute basics, one of these engines is naturally aspirated and one of them is turbocharged. I think that's kind of obvious. More specifically, the 2JZ GTE uses a sequential twin turbo system. That's what the T in 2JZ GTE is for. Comparing the differences from top to bottom, we'll start with the cylinder head, where the majority of differences between these two engines are found. Both these engines use a cast aluminum cylinder head with electronic fuel injection. The later years of each 2JZ variant feature Toyota's VVTi system to increase power output and efficiency. The apparent goals that Toyota had with the GTE head was to increase flow and increase cooling capacity. This is evident in the fact that the GTE head has much larger intake ports, although it does have smaller exhaust ports, and it has larger and deeper cooling passages. With more cooling throughout the head, the chance of knock is greatly reduced and you're able to make more power safely. Other than having larger intake ports and smaller exhaust ports, the intake and exhaust layouts are completely different and the intake and exhaust manifolds are not interchangeable between these two engines. This is important to note because there's a lot more aftermarket support for the GTE, so you're gonna have a much easier time finding an intake manifold or an exhaust manifold for a GTE compared to a GE. Realistically, both of these cylinder heads are really good and offer a lot of flow, great cooling capacity, and a lot of potential, but the GTE simply is the better head with even more flow and even better cooling than the GE. Also, it has significantly more aftermarket support. Other notable differences between the heads include the GE's much thinner head gasket, the GTE's larger combustion chamber, a slightly different valve cover bolt pattern, and the GTE having more water jackets on the exhaust side than the GE. Another really interesting thing I want to bring up is that a lot of people claim that Yamaha helped Toyota develop the 2JZ head, but there is literally not a single piece of evidence, a PDF, a document, a press release, anything to support this claim. Now what is true is that Yamaha has helped Toyota quite a bit in the past with other engines, most notably the 1JZ, and the 1JZ head and the 2JZ head are incredibly similar. You could say since the 1JZ head and the 2JZ head have a very similar design and Yamaha helped Toyota with the 1JZ head that effectively Yamaha helped Toyota with the 2JZ head, but there's nothing directly linking Yamaha to the 2JZ. It's very possible that Yamaha did in fact help Toyota with the 2JZ, but there is no actual proof for that claim. Moving from the head down to the block, there are very little differences between these two engines. The biggest difference between the GE and the GTE is the fact that the GTE has piston oil squirters, which are simply just little squirters that spray oil up at the bottom of the piston dome to help keep the piston cool. Other than that, the blocks are incredibly similar and they're equally as strong. Other notable differences is the GE's lack of a OEM turbo drain, uh, but you can easily drill and tap the GE block in the same exact location where the GTE oil drain is if you wanted to add a turbo oil drain to a GE. Another weird little difference is that the GTE has a water-cooled oil filter adapter where the GE doesn't. Just another weird little thing. Now another thing you'll see a lot of people on the internet claim is that the GE and the GTE have exactly the same connecting rods. And this is only partially true. All of them have the same connecting rods except for the 2JZ GE with variable valve timing. Those specific engines came with much thinner and lighting connecting rods. 
which Toyota presumably used to increase efficiency since the GE really wasn't used in many hardcore applications. They really didn't need that extra strength. The pistons between the GE and the GTE are significantly different with the GE having a much higher compression ratio. This is to help the GE make as much power and be as efficient as possible in naturally aspirated form. The only problem is high compression ratio and forced induction don't always work very well together. So if you wanted to build a high horsepower GE, the OEM pistons are pretty much the first thing that need to be replaced. For the most part, those are all the significant differences between the 2JZ GE and the 2JZ GTE. There are other small differences such as the GE having a slightly better oil pump and the early GE engines using rotary style ignition instead of coil on plug but those are all relatively minor differences. Now, when it comes to performance, there's pretty much not a single reason to pick a GE over a GTE. If you're on a budget, the GE is most definitely the better engine because it is significantly cheaper to buy secondhand. So you could just buy a GE and stick a turbo on it and it probably still cost a little bit less than a full GTE swap. That being said, if you had something like a Mark IV Supra, you're gonna get better resale value if you had a GTE swapped into your GE Supra instead of doing an NAT setup on a GE. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making this one. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel and tells YouTube to put this video in front of more people. While you're down there hitting the thumbs up button, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos and drop a comment down below. Let me know what kind of videos you wanna see in the future. This is Bryce with Dust Runners Automotive Journal, signing off.